Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Did Hungry Gamer is back with another Kickstarter preview, and this is the third, fourth video I have done for the Rune Lords. And if you're not familiar, you can go check out a link to some of the other videos I did. However, the reason I'm doing this is because since the Kickstarter did not fund, they've gone back and completely, well, not completely, but made some major, major changes to the game. And I've only gotten to play the new version via, ta via Tabletop Simulator, so I can't shoot a review like I normally do, though one of the designers, John, was nice enough to send me some footage of a few things in particular, and I'll kind of put those up there as as I speak about it a little bit later. However, I also got to play the game with Michael Kelly of One Stop Co-op Shop. We got to do a cooperative uh, scenario together, and he's been kind enough to offer to join me here on the channel to kind of give his thoughts and maybe even a little bit of a preview of what's coming on his review as well. I'm Michael Kelly, and, and welcome to Some Things and Some Amount of Minutes, where I talk about some things and just about the same amount of minutes. Today we're looking at the Rune Lords, specifically focusing on the solo and cooperative mode. I do have to give a couple of disclaimers. The first one is I was sent a review copy of this game. Second, I am also a designer. I design games sometimes, and that also leads me to, well, design additional stuff for games that already exist. And along with that, I have actually submitted several designs out to several companies, and I am waiting to find out if those are or are not going to be accepted. Though, of course, this particular company is not one that I submitted it to. My first thing with the Rune Lords is the overall complexity of everything that comes with the game. You see, with this game, you do wind up getting a whole lot of stuff that you can go on and you can do. And that may be too much for you, or it may be right what you're looking for. You see, because you have to deal with the potential deck building, and then you have to deal with the solo modes, and then maybe you're also wanting to look at the multiplayer competitive mode, and that's a whole lot of things in one package. And that could be overwhelming to you, or perhaps it could be exactly what you're looking for. My next thing on the list is the dice mechanics of the game. They are pretty quick. It's a nice and simple increasing of the color of your die. And the darker the die is, the better chance you're going to have to be able to do damage. And it is quick, it is simple, and it is easy. And it's definitely going to be a full-on pro for me. My next one is definitely another pro for me, and that is the unit selection while you are playing through the game. What's going to be happening is you're going to be drawing cards every time you want to bring out a new unit. And so you, while you may know what your deck is and what it is set up to do, you're never going to know exactly what it is. And you couple that with the fact that there is no summoning cost or anything like that. Each turn you can always bring out more units. It does make for a game that moves along pretty quickly and every time you play is fairly varied. And my next one on the list is going to be a mix. Though it is leaning pro with a little bit of leaning towards the con and then if you really look closely it does lean a bit back towards the pro. That is the overall complexity of the game. What I mean by that is there are a whole bunch of tactical considerations that you have to take into play. You are dealing with a whole variety of status tokens, a whole variety of bonuses that you may get depending on exactly where you are behind the opponent that you're trying to attack. There is disengagement attacks, opportunity attacks, you're dealing with a whole variety of different terrains and how does that work and who gets to skip what terrain. And so that could be for you a whole lot and could be too much. But on the other hand, if you like that kind of thing, then this could be exactly what it is that you are looking for. And then I'm going to finish with a full on con at the end. And that is simply that a Hungry Gamer was not actually sent a prototype of this one. And so he really didn't have the full experience that I did. And I just think that's kind of unfair and really a full on con for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next stop. Thank you to Michael Kelly for joining us. Now, I wanted to give my thoughts. So if you have checked out the old videos, you'll know that one of the things that I liked about the game was the deck building mechanic that was in the game. Now, I'm on the record of not being a big fan of deck construction, but I do like deck builders. And the fact that if you choose and you want to vary your armies, you can do it through this now quick deck building game because it is much faster now than it used to be. Everything is faster now than it used to be, which I'm a big fan of. 
I really, really like that, that you can kind of make your game this kind of epic adventure that you're going on, which is very, very cool. I also really appreciate the hard choice that they made. The hard choice that they made was they got rid of the D20. And gosh, I just like that because along with that, they got rid of pretty much all of the math, if not all of the math that went with it. Because in the original game, it was you roll this, you add this modifier and this modifier, and we got over this number, then you get to this little extra thing and that might give you a modifier for later. And it was a lot. It was satisfying, but it was super crunchy. And now it's much less crunchy. It's different colors of dice that do different things and are better and you roll it and whatever's on the die, that's what you get. And that is just so much faster. It is so much more streamlined. Along with that, they have compacted and contracted a little bit all of the different status effects and how those work. Those now work a little bit quicker, a little bit cleaner, a little bit simpler. But again, it's now faster. Playing the cooperative or competitive game is just now faster. And that doesn't change all the things that I had originally liked about it. I had originally really liked the way as units die, you're just kind of flipping new ones out and you flip new ones out. And that is still a fun mechanic that you never really know exactly what your army is going to bring out at any given moment. And that, that little bit of chaos is attractive to me. And along with that, I do think that they have done a pretty darn good job of realizing the theme. And now I have not read the entire Rune Lord series. In fact, I'm not, I don't think it's actually done yet, but I did go back and read three or four of the books when I first got this because I was curious about the world and the magic in the world. And it does feel like you are playing that. It does feel like here you have somebody that wants, wants their lord to win. They're willing to give of themselves and, okay, I will take all of your agility and, well, now you just lay in a bed forever, but now I'm faster. And it's dark and it's insane, but it's kind of fun. So I think they've done a very good job of that. That is not to say that I don't have some quibbles with the game. I certainly do. And the main two that I have are still a little bit carryovers from the older version. And one is there still are a fair amount of status effects that you have to track. I think there's six or seven or eight. And that may feel like a lot to you because it's a lot of things you do have to track. They're not hard to track. They used to be much harder to track but that still could be a lot. And this still is a very, not very, but fairly crunchy tactical combat game. And what I mean by that is facing matters, flanking matters. It's a hex, but if you're on kind of the back two sides of the hex, then you get one bonus. But if you're directly behind them, you get a different bonus. And there, if you try to run past somebody, there is a certain die roll that might do something to you then. And there's just, it's just crunchier. It's just crunchier and heavier, and it's not light. Once you have mastered the system, then it's pretty fast. But until you master the system, it's going to be slow. So if you are not looking for a kind of a heavier, crunchier game, then this one might not be for you. But with all that said, I do think that all of the changes that they have made are improvements. Everything is faster. Everything is cleaner. Everything is simpler. And I really think that makes this game more exciting than it was before. And I was pretty high on the game. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a lot. And I was really bad at it. I mean, I'm still bad at it, but it's not quite so much anymore. And I like that. I think that is a boon. And I think they have done a good job of listening to the feedback they got and making those changes. So with all that said, Go check out some of the other videos that have a little more gameplay. Check out Michael Kelly's One Stop Co-op Shop. I believe he's actually doing a full playthrough of one, so you can kind of get an idea of what is going on. And you can also find links to my old videos down in the description. I will warn you now, they are old, the sound quality is worse, the video quality is worse, and the rules have changed. But if you are curious to see where they were and where they are now, that's where you can find that. And obviously, a big thank you to Michael Kelly for letting me send him up for this video. If you couldn't figure it out, that was not actually Michael Kelly. <gasps> but as always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.